Alright, so there's this guy. Let's call him the Guru of Ganja. You think I'm just making that up, don't you? I can totally tell you think I'm making that up, but I'm not. He is actually known as the Guru of Ganja because he actually works for a pot club. A pot club, get this, get this, that is state sanctioned. And for this club, he grows hundreds of little marijuana plants. Little marijuana plants that he gives to sick people. It is sanctioned by Oakland officials in Oakland, San Francisco. Of course, we all know that if I'm talking about him, something horrible happened to him. The federal government became involved. Dun, dun, dun. He was convicted on three cultivation and conspiracy charges. So the question clearly becomes, what? It's clearly a violation of this individual's rights. I mean, he's working for his government and he's being prosecuted um, by the federal government. What? I personally remember that little document, that little, little document called the Bill of Rights. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. So, if this is unconstitutional, how are they doing it? And the answer lies, of course, with the U.S. Supreme Court. In 2005, the Supreme Court ruled that under the Commerce Clause, the federal government could ban marijuana of all sorts, regardless of medical marijuana laws in specific states. If I'm growing marijuana to give to sick patients in my local community, in my state where it's actually legal to do so, how exactly does that affect interstate commerce? I would like to talk to you about something called the Wickard Aggregation Principle. Yes, yes, that's what it's called. So there's this farmer guy, and he's growing wheat, but he's only gonna eat the wheat himself, so he's like, come on people, that does not affect interstate commerce. And the Supreme Court comes in and they're all, that affects interstate commerce. Because you see, good sir, if you were not growing it for yourself, you would have to buy it. In the aggregate, that affects interstate commerce. I have serious doubts about whether anyone was really concerned about commerce during this case. If I really believed that the Supreme Justices were sitting in the back room thinking, ah, marijuana, if they do this, it's going to screw up the entire economy. Interstate commerce is going to go whack. The effects are going to be outrageous. I, I still wouldn't agree with them. I mean, marijuana is a victimless crime and it clearly shouldn't be illegal anyway. But I would have a lot more respect for them. Be all, you know, they're trying. They're sitting up there on their benches and they're doing the best they can and Go America! But to purposely mold the laws that govern our country to come up with an outcome that they think is more desirable when it clearly goes against our Constitution, that's just scandalous.